Hello class, it's Miss Augustine. The last video that you watched from me was about the atomic orbital worksheets, um, and they were called atomic orbitals and sublevels, the two worksheets that you did. So I kind of want to go through. The one worksheet looked like this, and it had you filling out the principal energy level number, uh, the number of sublevels at that level, the type of sublevels, the number of orbitals, and the maximum number of electrons. So I wanted to share with you how that should be filled in. And at this point, if you want to um, pause the video and pull out your Chapter 13 packets, you could then fill in the information here, uh, principal levels 1 through 4, the number of sublevels is the same, 1 through 4, and then this column shows you the type of sublevels. So at principal level 1, you only have one type of sublevel, that's S. It has one orbital and can hold two electrons. At the second level, you have the S and P sublevels. Again, one orbital, three orbitals, so the number of electrons um, here. 1 times 2 would be 2, and um, 3 times 2 is 6. So at level 2, since you have both the S and the P type of sublevels, you could have a total of 8 electrons. At the third level, with S, P, and D sublevels, you could hold a total of 18. And at the fourth principal energy level, with sublevels S, P, D, and F, you could have a total of 32 electrons. And then the second page that you worked on was this one that had this little sublevel chart. And so the next slide shows you how that chart should be filled in. So here you'll see that it's filled in for you with S, P, D, and F. The number of orbitals for S is 1, P is 3, D is 5, and F is 7. So you have a possible 2, 6, 10, or 14 electrons at each of those types of sublevels. So here are the two pages filled out for you. And again, if you want to pause uh, the video and fill out and make sure that you correctly filled in these two pages of your worksheet, um, that would be really a good thing to do at this point. Um, for now, though, I'm going to go on with my uh, tutorial for you. So the next thing we do is we map out what the electrons in orbitals look like. And for that, we're going to do an actual map of what the electron configuration is. And you might ask yourself, self, why do I care? what the electrons look like, and why do I have to map them out? And the short answer is that chemistry is all about electrons. It's about what's going on with the electrons. You'll recall me saying it isn't about you, it isn't about me, it's about the electrons. So we need to know exactly where the electrons are because that tells us what their energy is. And what their energy is and where they're located is going to determine how atoms behave, and whether when an atom encounters another atom, it's going to just hang out and do nothing, or whether it's going to interact with another atom, and how that happens. So it's all about knowing exactly where the electrons are. So we have a series of rules that we're going to use to figure out where the electrons are in the orbitals. And the first rule that we follow is known as the Aufbau principle. And it states that electrons enter the lowest energy orbitals first. So electrons build up from lowest energy to highest. The word Aufbau is actually a German word, and it means to build up or construct. So um, the next slide is going to show you the order in which orbitals fill. Now before I click on the next slide, I want to point out that um, the Bohr model of the atom stated that the energy levels are like the rungs of a ladder equally spaced. But as we moved into uh, greater knowledge of the atom, we learned that the energy levels are not equally spaced, and in fact, the farther you get 
from the nucleus, the closer together they're spaced. And they don't fill in in a nice numerical order like we would like them to. They actually fill in according to their energy. And this next diagram shows you how that works. So this diagram, uh, which is called, as I said, an alphabet diagram, it's just a table and it has the energy levels from one through seven. As I've told you, there's seven possible energy levels. And then at each row from the bottom up, it's showing you the sublevels that exist at that level as well. Keep losing my arrow, sorry. So at the first principle uh, energy level, there's only one sublevel. S, at two, there are two, they're called S and P. At the third level, there are three, S, P, and D, and so on. So what this diagram does is it allows you to learn how to draw your diagram. So if you're thinking about down here being the nucleus, and the levels are building up one through seven away from the nucleus, if you follow the arrows, you'll know what to draw. So it goes 1S, then the next level is the 2S, then it would be the 2P, and then the 3S, and then the 3P, and then the 4S, and then the 3D, the 4P, the 5S, and so on. Notice that the 3P fills in, and then the 4S. And the 4S, the fourth level, fills in actually before the 3D, and that's because the 4S energy level is lower energy than the 3D. So it fills in according to energy. The next slide shows you how you would go about mapping this. So on this left hand side I have my AFBAO diagram so I know what to do. And then over here I've laid out how you would draw a diagram. And these are called orbital draws or orbital diagrams. Um, to show the mapping out of electrons. And what I want to point out here is that if the nucleus is here, then that would be the lowest energy and then moving upward to the highest energy. So here, I would read my alphabet diagram and see I have to write 1s. So I would come over here and I would write 1s. And I remember that the s orbital, uh, s sublevel has only one orbital. So there it is, I draw one line. Now why am I drawing these lines? What is this all about? Well, if you're trying to draw the electron configuration, and you'll recall we looked at what the orbitals look like, it would be really difficult to draw out a sphere every time you wanted an s orbital, and the dumbbell shapes for the p's, and those crazy cloverleafs for the d's. It's very difficult. So in order to easily map out what the electrons look like, we use this notation where we do it two-dimensionally on paper and we use a line to depict an orbital. So here, 1s, 1s, 2s, we draw the 2s and again we're putting it higher because it's higher in energy. We're only drawing one line because there's only one orbital. Then we get to the 2p level and the p sublevel has three orbitals so I have to draw three lines, um, one for each orbital. And then the next thing that would happen would be the 3s, so we would draw the 3s. And then we'd go to the next row and we'd have the 3p and the 4s. So 3p, I draw three lines, 4s, I draw one. So here what you have to remember is the alphabet diagram tells you how to draw your little diagram on paper. And you just have to remember that every time you draw an s, you only give it one line because there's only one orbital or one bedroom, so to speak. Every time you are at a P sublevel, you're going to have to draw three lines. And when we get up to D's, you would have to draw five lines. So continuing along, the next thing we talk about is the Pauli exclusion principle. And that states that any given orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons and they must have opposite spins in order to hang out together. So remember electrons are negatively charged. In order for them to hang out in the same bedroom, so to speak, which is what an orbital is kind of like, they have to have opposite spins. So we show them as an arrow up or an arrow down. 
And then the next rule that we need to follow is Hund's rule, which states that when orbitals have equal energy, you have to put one electron into each orbital before any are filled. So before you can put the second electron in an orbital, you'd have to have one electron in each of the orbitals before they could be filled in. I'd like to use an analogy here of um, bedrooms. So if I have a house with my master bedroom on the first floor, and on the second floor I have three bedrooms, when I have my first child, I put that child in a bedroom by itself. I have a second kid, put the second kid in a bedroom by itself. I have a third kid, put the third kid in the bedroom like itself by itself. Because electrons are like kids. They want their own room. Now, if I were to have a fourth child and I don't have any more bedrooms, I'm going to have to pair somebody up. So you can think of electrons like kids. They want to be in their own room, and they're not going to be paired up unless somebody forces them to, like an evil parent that forces you to share your room with somebody else. So what does that look like? Hun's rule applies to P and D orbitals. So here I'm showing you three P orbitals and five D orbitals, and you'll see that the electrons will fill in with one in each orbital rather than pairing up. The same goes for the D. You would have five electrons, for instance. You couldn't put them here, here, and here. They're going to be all spread apart, and they're not going to pair up in the same orbital until they're forced to, and then eventually they will pair up. So now we are ready to try doing some electron configuration diagrams. In your packet, there are electron configuration level 1 and 2. And we're going to refer to our alpha diagrams in order to do that. And the worksheet looks like this. So now what you're ready to do is you can watch a second tutorial that I'm making, making for you about how to fill in electron configuration diagrams. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing out.